Hey folks, BFG Neil here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Lynx.Helium hotspot. Um, it's just arrived, so I'm going to go over it and see what I think about it. This is a first impressions video, so what I'll do is I'll follow this up with a week of earnings once I've placed it, but just the initial impressions, what I think of it, what I think of the parts, and, and you know, just how good I think it looks from the outset. Um, this won't really be any measurement on data or usage, that always comes later. So what I've decided to do, rather than append them to this video, I'll do a separate video about that. So first thing I want to show you is just, just the size of this hotspot. It's, it's one of the biggest that I've ever seen. So uh, it's a nice size, nice case. Um, it's got some status LEDs on the top, but you know, I, I'm not a person with small hands and look how big this case is. It's just one of the biggest that I've seen. Um, you know, wasted space isn't the worst thing. You know, here's a synchro bit versus the, the link stop. Um, they used to run this firmware, but the synchro bits have some power issues and heat issues, so um, having that extra space is nice, but just look at the size difference between the two. Um, very, very big boards. And here it is versus a Bobcat. So, you know, one of the largest hotspots I've seen, I'm sure most of you have seen a Bobcat. Now, one thing to note about this antenna that I've seen, it looks about 3 dBi, but um, written on it is the frequency that it's tuned to. So it's actually tuned to 860 to 930 MHz. So it's quite a wide band antenna. Not something I choose to use for my region, you know, 868. Why, why go so far? It's just not power tuned to the right region. So generally they're okay, but you know, I'd look to be changing it. And the last thing I want to show you is just a, just a plug. So most of you Americans are used to this type of plug, but in the UK we have a three prong plug. So um, they've kind of given this weird travel adapter to it. Um, not that this is unsafe, it's just something I personally wouldn't trust. So I'd be looking to replace this with an off aftermarket one that's all built into the same thing. Now this is a look on the inside. Um, the cable at the top is to the lights, but this is a new RK based board. So this is not the Pi IO board that you used to be. This is an RK based board. And you can see there's quite a lot of space in the back of it. So, you know, the heatsink looks good. The board looks good. The Laura cards underneath, so it's hard to show without fully taking it apart. Um, but overall, yeah, not a bad looking hotspot. Now this is the back of the board. You see there's a Bluetooth pairing button now, Laura card, USB ports, LAN port, and a DC in. So just those USB ports are relics from the old system. So nothing much you could do with those. So I've been trying to onboard for about an hour now and I've been having some issues. So one thing I will say is the LED lights on the top don't, not all use and just don't make a bit of sense. So um, it's quite hard to explain what they are. And, and whilst talking to some of the engineers, um, you know, they've alluded to the problem, but um, there's no manual that comes with the device either so very hard to get going so after about an hour of talking with um, the links dot staff they've basically informed me that I was expecting too much of this unit um, they, they used to come with a Raspberry Pi compute module um, for with a compute module board um, it was like um, an IO board that allowed you to extend what a Raspberry Pi does um, they've since moved to RK based boards and they've lost the Synchrobit firmware so they don't have an IP dashboard anymore so you can't access these locally to see what's going on um, and one of the other things that I was told as well that I've just found out is that you need to leave these things on for 24 hours to fetch updates. So they only check for firmware updates once a day. And this is generally just to save on bandwidth bills. So, you know, if you've got a lot of hotspots checking in all the time, it, it can um, overload onboarding servers. So to save costs, they make them check in once a day. So when you first get a links.hotspot, you need to power it on and leave it for 24 hours to fetch a the latest firmware. So just be aware of that when you're trying. Um, I obviously went straight on their Discord, talked to some of the support staff, and they've logged in and, and started to clear it, but just wanted to make people aware of that. And that's it. That's the first look at the links.hotspot. So let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll follow this video up with another video of how it's done over a week period of time. So um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this content, and remember to like and subscribe, and leave a comment. Bye for now.